Welcome to Real Music. Throughout this series we'll be looking at contemporary film music and film music history. In this program we'll be dealing with fantasy films, a genre that is surprisingly sophisticated in its use of music score. Director Peter Jackson's visionary take on J.R.R. R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings novels gave composer Howard Shaw a veritable feast of choices. He wrote this majestic piece for the second instalment, The Two Towers. The pace is quickened. I must have caught our scent. Hurry! Come on, Ghibli! After the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Peter Jackson directed a remake of King Kong, who slavishly followed the tone of the 1933 original, his favourite film, and Max Steiner's classic music is commonly regarded as the very first film score. And by that I mean that it is the first score to be built and developed from small fragments of music depending on the film's action. The broad strokes of the technique became known as Mickey Mousing. Music synchronised to specific moments and movements, as you might see in an animated cartoon. Sometimes it's not subtle, but in this case it works beautifully. Now, keeping with the primate theme, another kind of ape appeared in 1968 in the highly commercial Planet of the Apes films. It all started with Franklin J. Schaffner's original with Charlton Heston, Kim Hunter and Roddy McDowell. Many of the critics thought that Jerry Goldsmith's music was electronic, with its canvas of weird and unsettling sounds, primitive and provocative. However, every note was generated acoustically, not a synthesizer in sight. Goldsmith's work was much imitated. He subsequently scored films as diverse as Patton, Papillon, Chinatown, Alien, Under Fire and L.A. Confidential. One of Goldsmith's students, Marco Beltrami, came on the scene quite recently. In the Will Smith science fiction blockbuster I, Robot, Beltrami gave us a strident and propulsive main title. I did not murder him. Explain why you were hiding at the crime scene. I did not murder him. He made you angry. I did not murder him. I'm gonna miss the good old days. What good old days? When people were killed by other people. My robots don't kill people. And they threw somebody out of a window. Is that registering with you? A robot cannot harm a human being.
Jason and the Argonauts, a childhood favourite and still a remarkable achievement. Based on the Greek myth of a band of brothers in search of the legendary Golden Fleece, Ray Harryhausen's groundbreaking special effects and Bernard Herrmann's awesome score made it an instant classic. Here's the moment when the god Poseidon rises to save Jason's ship from the deadly clashing rocks. John Williams is no stranger to the science fiction fantasy genre. Time and again he's proved his mettle with music from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Raiders of the Lost Ark, E.T. and the Harry Potter films. With Superman, there is a sequence with Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder where they are literally floating. Essentially, it's a love scene that is both enchanting and original. Can you read my mind? Do you know what it is that you do to me? I don't know who you are. Just a friend from another star. Here I am, like a kid out of school. Holding hands with a god. I'm a fool. Will you look at me? Quivering. Like a little girl, shivering. You can see right through me. Can you read my mind? Can you picture the things I'm thinking of? Wondering why you are all the wonderful things you are. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the old Republic. Williams is renowned for his music to George Lucas's Star Wars series. His grand themes and large orchestral compositions are a throwback to the Viennese romantic Hollywood style of the 30s and 40s, reminding us of Eric Korngold, Dmitri Tiomkin and Franz Waxman, and many others who escaped from Europe and the rise of Nazi Germany. Here is John Williams' music, a climactic moment from Star Wars The Phantom Menace.
Alan Silvestri came to prominence in the mid-80s with his punchy score for Back to the Future. More recently, he worked to similar effect on Marvel Studios' Avengers franchise. Out of nowhere came a truly heroic theme, variations of which are used throughout the series, most potently in Avengers Endgame. Real music will return with the horror film score, a genre that is the most cinematic, yet so often misunderstood and sidelined. Please join us.